Okay, we are live. So welcome back, everybody. Happy New Year. It's been a while since we've done some of these educational, um, I guess, conversations really is what they are. And I'm joined once again with my dear friend and colleague, Linda Downey, also a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And Linda and I have been kind of discussing it behind the scenes, you know, what are you hearing from your clients? What kinds of things are you hearing? And one of the, I guess, bringing themes between both of us has been, you know, why can't I just figure this out with diet? And, you know, for anybody who has chronic health issues, we're not saying that diet isn't part of the picture, right? I mean, definitely diet is a place to start. But sometimes we need to go deeper with functional lab testing. And so we wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between conventional and functional, but why would we use some of that testing and what kinds of things can we discover? So, you know, Linda, I'd love for you to just kind of give us a, a high level overview of your view of functional lab testing. And then we can talk about the different things that people can discover by turning over those stones with some uniquely designed tests. Yeah, sure. So the way that I um, look at the tests, and it was a big reason why I became an FDN so that I had I could use the testing that, you know, with some other levels of working with clients, I couldn't do because I knew that I would need more information with people when you when you're chronically, you know, not getting better chronically ill. And so I think a couple things to remember about the tests are number one, well, you know, all the labs are different, but uh, um, the, the levels and the ranges are based on healthy populations, but we're Key not point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So healthy populations. But if, when we look at the numbers of people who are not well across the country, like, is that really a healthy range? Because as a functional uh, practitioner, we want to know optimal, not just what like is generally accepted in this country, because too many of us in this country are not functionally optimally, our bodies aren't where they should be. So I think that's the first thing I always like to sort of explain to people is, you know, where we look at a range compared to where like the general norms are, or a conventional range might say, yeah, you're fine. Two different things. Mm -hmm. and, and the other thing I think um, that's important to remember is, you know, the common conventional test may be our blood work. But, and functional is, is saying, so blood work is like, what's going on in the blood at this moment in time, right? Yeah. So it's a snapshot at this moment in time of what is going on in the blood. But functional tests can look at, you know, a whole array of like, what, what, what metabolites are being produced and how much of those are being excreted, you know, like, it'll, we can compare um, different processes in the body and say, well, how is that whole thing working well together? And also looking at other things, other samples than just the blood, whether it's the urine, whether it's the saliva, whether it's the hair, whether it's mucus out of your nose, which I know you just want to talk about. Um, yeah. <laughs> but whatever it is, you know, like that's giving us a like a whole 3D picture, I think. That's the way I look at it anyway. Exactly. And, and I describe it very similarly in that, you know, I want to understand how somebody's body is functioning in, in a lot of different levels. And while blood work does give us some of that information, it doesn't give us the whole picture. So it's kind of like you're looking at a, a person as if they're, I always use the analogy of a diamond. I want to look at each facet. I wanna look from a lot of different angles to understand what's going on. And blood chemistry is fantastic, but it really only gives us one of those facets to look at. Right. And when we can start looking at other functional lab testing, we can get a lot better uh, overall picture, a 30,000 foot view picture, which is what I like to call it too. Um, old flying day analogy, but that's kind of what it's like. It's like looking, instead of being in the canyon and looking at the river, we're really bringing it back up so that we can see the valleys and we can see the peaks and we can see the lakes that connect to the river, et cetera. And so that's why I like using functional lab testing to be able to really get those insights, especially when clients are feeling like they're kind of stuck 
you know, like, why would, why would I really want to do something more than blood work? All my blood work comes back normal. Yet, really, I have to ask them, but how do you feel in your yeah. body? And if they're not feeling vibrant and waking up with a ton of energy and, you know, motivated to go throughout their day, if they're dragging with fatigue or not able to think clearly and can't remember why they walked into a room or they're having chronic pain or aches, they're not, they're not functioning optimally, right? right? So that's the key is being able to use some of these labs to be able to get some good insight. Um, both you and I operate where we have some of our favorite go-tos. So maybe we can talk a little bit about what are those go-tos and why do we choose those for the majority of people. But then there's a bunch of other labs that are available when we have specific cases and we might want to look at some specific things. What are your favorites and what are kind of your basic go-tos? I always start with the gut and food because to me, food is number one, we were just talking about this low hanging fruit, because you can make changes in the diet. And right away within a couple of days, people will notice they feel better. So because you're putting food in your body every day, all day long. So that's one of the first places that can immediately um, make a difference. So the food testing that I really like, um, and I wasn't originally trained on this, but I've switched over to it all the time, is the zoomers test. And the zoomers test looks at the way the peptides are being um, seen by the immune system and how the immune system is responding to the peptides. And then also on a Zoomers test, you have a full panel, which will look at the whole protein in its entirety. So a Zoomers test or Vibrant America is the lab and they will, they will bundle Zoomers tests so that they, you can see, because you can have somebody who doesn't respond well to a full protein. Like, let's just say this is a, a um, I think maybe an example most people have heard of, an infant who's drinking formula and not doing well and, and really having a lot of issues. And, and oftentimes like a pediatrician will say, okay, let's put them on an elemental diet. It's still maybe a dairy diet, but it's broken down now into the peptides and then the infant is fine. So they didn't do well with the whole protein, but they did okay with the peptides. And that to me is, you know, the Zoomers test can sort of show us that, um, how are they doing Correct. with the breakdown or with the full panel? And then, and then the other one that I um, do initially, the two I think go to, uh, very well together is a, a stool test, because it, for me, the, the baseline is the gut. So absolutely, the inflammation, the inflammation, the microbiome, let's go to work there. And let's spend, you know, eight, 12 weeks on that and clearing stuff. And then for a lot of people, you know, okay, I need to keep working on rebuilding my microbiome, but I notice my symptoms are gone. For people who maybe have autoimmune diagnosis, or more than one autoimmune diagnosis, then there's definitely places to go further. And then there's lots of places you can go. And and I use, um, this is not testing, but I think you and I both use the cell core protocol. So I sort of follow their um, expectation as well that there's, you know, probably heavy metal issues, there's probably mold issues, there's probably other radiation and chemicals that need to be pulled out. And we can test for any and all of those. Absolutely. And I, I agree with you 100% that, you know, gut testing is by far one of the foundations that should be included in any practitioner's, um, I guess, tool bag, or medical bag, whatever it happens to be. But really understanding that, uh, you know, we knew, what was it, 2,500 years ago that all disease originates in the gut, right? Hippocrates is credited for that quote. Um, and we knew that a lot of that came from the gut. And so what we know now about the microbiome is not only do we have this entire ecology, but a lot of our immune system is created in the cell lining as well as that microbiome has a particular job in terms of our own biochemistry. So, you know, what we know now about the microbiome to me is absolutely fascinating that we've got a whole subset of species that help develop our levels of vitamin D in the gut and our levels of vitamin B12. And so, you know, you can get from blood chemistry, for example, 
a marker called homocysteine. And if homocysteine is elevated, that's associated with B12 deficiency. Well, what we don't know is that because somebody's not getting enough of that in their diet, or is that because those microbiome species are not ample enough in the, in the gut? So that's why it's a, a core foundational test. So for me, that's one of the tests that I'm always looking towards. And um, you mentioned Cellcore as a, a protocol and using their supplements in a protocol. They've got a nice comprehensive protocol that's stacked together in a, in a way that starts with the very basic foundations. And their very second phase is dealing with gut issues. Yes. Right. And working through the gut issues. So, you know, it's core to anybody's health. So I think that's one of the labs that I would use on a regular basis. And of course, they mo move beyond that and start talking, um, start talking. <laughs> they do a lot more than talking. Those <laughs> supplements actually help restore functionality when somebody has high levels of environmental toxins and heavy metals. And those are later on down the line. And you had mentioned that there are tests that you can do for those things. And that's something that I'll do with a client who's gone through my foundation program. And if they're curious about whether or not there's environmental toxins or heavy metals, we can run those labs. And if those come back with some results, then absolutely, we're going to continue that protocol and continue working and refining their health that way. Um, and then, of course, mold is common. It's one of those things that we can use one of these functional tests for. There's lots of different styles of mold testing, whether you're not you're testing the body or the home or what what have you. But this is what's so, um, I guess, powerful about functional lab testing is that if we suspect that there's something going on with somebody, there is probably a lab test that's been designed for that so that we can definitively know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Um, and this stuff isn't available with the national labs, the lab corp, the quest, that right. kind of stuff. And insurance doesn't really even recognize it. I mean, unfortunately, they're not cheap. Some of them are cheaper than others, but you know, it can be uh, several hundred dollars to do some, some of the different tests and insurance, it doesn't recognize them, but it, we get such great information to really help people get better. Um, if right. we need it, I mean, I don't, I don't, do the tests unless we've worked for so long and we're still stuck, then it's like, let's spend the money. I don't like automatically, let's do five tests. No, you know, on, only when yep. we need to. But the other one that I really like, well, there's there's two, um, but the, you know, genetic testing, like let's just say you don't have the right genes or the best genes for like making glutathione and glutathione is a main antioxidant and it's a critical component in detoxification and genetically you're not making glutathione well. Um, so, you know, we can go through all of that and, you know, all of our pro both you and I like have a, a program that we put people through and we can work on those things. And, but then like, I think that can be helpful to just know like what's, where are we really like going to bump up against a wall because of your genetics and hopefully we're going to turn the genetics on to optimal function and we're going to shut off, you know, the, the bad genes as we clean up stuff and pull toxins out. But that is something that at the, you know, at some point we might need to do. Yep. That's another one. That's really good information. Um, you know, especially if you are trying all the things and you're still kind of bumping up against that wall, that's when it's good to start figuring out, okay, where, where is it with this person's unique biochemistry, which we all have, you know, where is, where are those walls and, you know, what do we need to do to help optimize for that particular individual? And that's right. where genetic testing can come in. One of my other favorites is called an organic acids test um, because that's yeah, what it's testing for, right? Yeah. Is organic acids. Organic acids simply are different forms of um, metabolites that will show up in a urine sample that tell us different pathways in the biochemistry. So we have a pathway of biochemistry for a lot of different things, but for example, you know, the energy pathway, it kind of works in a circular form where right. we've got one compound that gets changed into another that gets changed into another and another and then finally it comes back full circle we can actually see using the organic acids test where some of those conversions are not happening correctly and right. that can that can 
wreak havoc with people's energy and how they feel. And so if we can get in those insights into how well is this circle working, well, if it's getting stuck at any one of those phases, you're not going to feel very well, right? So we can see where that's happening. And that gives you and I the leverage of being able to make very specific recommendations for a client to be able to correct that. You right. know, and sometimes that's using supplementation, but not always. Sometimes it's it, the diet and lifestyle levers get underestimated, I think, a lot in natural medicine. A lot of times it's lab test supplement, lab test supplement, just take a bunch of pills, you'll be fine. And really, there's a lot of other levers that have so much more leverage in terms of lifestyle factors and how we're dealing with our stress and what we're eating in our diet that can actually help get that cycle going again. So yeah, I mean, what what I was thinking when you were saying that is that lab test supplement lab test supplement mentality is really an uh, allopathic mentality, right? We just mm -hmm. something, you know, there's an ill we fix it with a pill, but instead of a prescription, we do a supplement and we think that's natural or or functional. Right. Uh, but it's really just taking the same philosophy or the same frame that you're looking through and, and trying to address it in the same way. Whereas, like you said, it really looking at the lifestyle, it's like sleep, you know, people want to know why aren't I sleeping well? And what do I need to take for sleep? Maybe I need melatonin, maybe I need this, but not really recognizing that they're, they're having electronic light in their eyes up until 11 or 1130. And they're not getting sunlight in their eyes in the morning. And, you know, very basic biological basic things that they could work on. And they wouldn't need something to go to sleep. You know, so that's just an Correct. example. But yeah, no, that's a great example. But that's one of those things that we can see in the testing, right, is whether or not somebody has a melatonin deficiency. Right. If that's the case, sure, we'll address it by helping them generate that melatonin. But right. it doesn't have to be in a pill. Exactly. Right? Yes. We can actually in influence our melatonin through the beauty of sunlight, which just, when I learned that several years back, I just was like, mind blown. This is amazing <laughs> that we can use free sunlight to actually help those levels of those hormones in the body. And lo and behold, a lot of a lot of my clients, since I've really urged the proper use of light, have noticed such a dramatic difference in yeah. how they feel. And this is, we're just talking about light, folks. I mean, it's, it's so basic, but at the same time, that's what I've been discovering is that a lot of times the foundations of what we should be focusing on in health get overlooked for the snazzy new supplement or the snazzy new lab or, or whatever. And, and I always have to remind myself when I get super excited to learn about a new lab or a new supplement that I need to make sure that we're also covering the basics. But yeah. and sunlight, I mean, melatonin and vitamin D, right? right. Su such important things. And coming from the sun, um, it just really reminds me that we are such biological beings. And we we live in this modern culture that that isn't really respecting that. So those are places to go to work. Um, mm -hmm. And we really can have you can have great results from that. Um, right. And this doesn't mean just in case anybody's starting to freak out that they have to give up living in a house and that they have to live outside and live off the land and hunt for their own food. No, 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 no. <laughs> you can still live in where you live. It doesn't mean that you have to move to Arizona to get sunshine. You know, it's like there are things that we can do from a practical standpoint that are just minor changes to lifestyle. Take, take your morning coffee and go sit by the window. Yeah. You know, as soon as you get up, I used to when I was really unwell, um, you know, with a lot of thyroid dysfunction and struggling, I would like come down in the morning and I would be like, no light, no light. And, you know, nobody talked to me like, you know, now I'm like, I'm, I'm up at 430 or five and I'm going and it's such a different life <laughs> for me. But I remember being that person of like, you know, um, because we're just 
or I woke up really still, really fatigued and groggy and all of that. But just all you have to do is just stay in the house that you're in and find a chair by the window if you want, you know, or if it's warm enough weather, step outside and, you know, have your coffee on the deck or the front porch or something like that, you know, right. Not that hard. It, and it doesn't take a lot, a lot either. It doesn't mean you have to spend half your day outside, mm-hmm. which is so time. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And then at night, the other part of that is at night, you know, doing that, the, that end of it and just getting out of it. But that's a different conversation. It is a total different conversation. This isn't intended to be about light. It's really intended to talk about the different kinds of things we can discover. So one of the things that I wanted to share with both you and everybody who's watching is, you know, one of the things that I've been personally trying to investigate and get an understanding of is these recurring headaches that I've been getting and really, you know, in my discovery and working with my own functional medicine practitioner, starting to really unlayer, like what are the different layers that are involved when it comes to chronic migraine pain and and that kind of thing. And what we have discovered in this case, my case personally, is that a lot of the pain tends to be in the frontal sinus area, which made me remember that in the time in the years that I lived in a house that had mold, I never really tested the sinuses to see if there's anything in the sinuses that got stuck up in there that could still be growing and and causing mold issues. And I just happened to have had a um, mycotoxin test that I had bought at one of the FDN conferences a year ago and finally got around to doing it right. and found mycotoxins. And I was like, oh, that's interesting because I know there's no mold in this house. We've tested this house. There's no mold in the house. So, um, so it's that, so what? It's, it's been in your nose then. It's, it's been, in, been my- in my nose the whole time. So Dr. Sinatra, who I work with, he, um, he said, well, let's do a nasal swab. And it's very similar to any kind of COVID test that you're getting these days. If you're testing for the actual antigen, it's a nasal swab. So I had a little swab that I had at home and I shoved it up there and twisted it around and, you know, tried to not wince. Um, And it was honestly not that uncomfortable, but it was one of those things that I thought, you know, let's test and see what's going on. And sure enough, like we found several different Um, we found several different species that are in there, including positive for Marcons, which is a long acronym. And I don't remember the actual acronym definition, Um, but that is a resistant antibiotic resistant bacterial population that is in the sinuses, as well as we found fungus in the sinuses. So I still have some mold hanging out in my sinuses, giving me mycotoxins that are showing up in my organic acids test. I'm so happy for you right now, though. I know, me too. I'm so psyched for you because I know, I know you get headaches, you know, and that is not fun. I used to get migraines as well. I don't anymore. Um, So, you know, different issue, but I just know migraine headaches are not fun. I'm really happy for you to, you know, like to find it, then it's like, yes, now I have an answer and a place to go to work. It's better than like, nope, can't find any problem. You must just be making it up. That's right. 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 You know, it's like, oh, something else must be causing the headaches or something else must be causing the sinus pressure. (laughs) So I'm thrilled. I just had my meeting with him today and we were talking about the different Um, protocols that are available and what I'm going to choose. And I have some research to do um, before I come to a conclusion on on how we're going to approach this. But um, at least I've got a path forward to see if I can't get rid of some of that. So, And that came from functional lab testing. There is no way that I would have been able to walk into a primary care physician's office and say, hey, I'm getting these sinus headaches. He would have sent me to, you know... some neurologist nose throat person right who would have tried to tell me that I had a deviated septum and needed surgery or something like that because that's the typical response right is oh I don't really know so let's do surgery and you know I'm just so thrilled that there's a path forward and I think that is the beauty that I've always had a really great experience with functional medicine lab testing and allowing it to help guide me in my own healing journey. I mean, that's what made me fall in love with it to begin with. 
right. is that finally there were answers that made sense instead of just looking at labs going, eh, I don't know what to do right now, except for to recommend that we irradiate your thyroid and cut it out. Exactly. That was the answer that I got from or your gallbladder, right? Yes, like, exactly. Have like parasites all up in the liver and the gallbladder and they're getting their gallbladder removed left and right. So I, I um, I'd be so interested to hear what, what you decide to do. Like I would love to learn from your case, you know? Yeah, what, of course. Um, I will be happy to share that. You know, there's a number of things that can be done and um, you know, we're talking about whether or not to use more uh, natural antibiotic herbs versus going straight for a pr prescription strength. Like we're talking through those different things. And once I figure it out, I'll, I'll share with you and share with all of you as well as I go through that journey. So yeah, I'm really happy for you though, Tere. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Any final thoughts on functional lab testing and why, what, how about when, when would you dig deeper with functional lab testing? So yeah, well, kind of like what I said before is because it's not covered by insurance and because they're usually not cheap, I don't just jump on it automatically. So I really like Cellcore's protocol because it is pretty, it's so comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And by the way, did you know that they have the new carboxy is for mold? Okay. I figured you did, but because that's a pretty new product. Yeah. But, um, um, I started that when I saw the mold in my mycotoxin. Okay. Test. So that's on board. Yeah. So I, I, would, I would put somebody at least through like the, the full protocol or yeah. close to the end. You know what I mean? And um, un, uh, unless they really knew that they lived somewhere in mold, but to, to me, uh, that's even like, okay, if you knew you lived in mold and we're having issues, then I don't think we need to test right now. Let's just go after it. Let's complete this cell core protocol because the binders that cell core uses are, they're not going to hurt you to take those. It's not going to hurt you to do the whole protocol. So it's going to bind with whatever's there, right. And right. pull out whatever. So I would rather go through that and then kind of see where the fallout lands and what do yep. we need to do and how do people still feel? That's, that's yep. my thinking just cause I try to be a little more frugal yeah. with just ordering stuff. And, you know, I, I do it slightly differently in that, you know, my recommendation is that if you've tried the diet and you've, you know, cleaning up your diet and you've tried doing some lifestyle stuff and you've gotten some lab work from your primary care physician and all of that came back normal, then at that point, start with the beginning pieces, right? The stool tests, like we talked in the beginning, like start there. doesn't mean that you have to go hog wild and test everything under the sun because there's way too many functional lab tests to do anyway. There's so many of them. There's hundreds and hundreds, you guys. There's so many different options. But to really start with some basic testing, just so that you can understand what's going on for you personally, start working through the protocol using Cellcor or whoever you're working with using that protocol. And then if you're still not feeling well, then discuss it with your practitioner and really understand like, okay, where do we strategically want to look? Like for me, sinuses, okay, let's test them directly right. as opposed to just generically looking for something else. So yeah. starting to get strategic as to which you choose next. Because sometimes it is appropriate to do the functional lab testing for Lyme disease, for example. Yeah, but it's not appropriate for everybody. And right. I definitely wouldn't start with something that specialized. Right, so. right. Yeah. And I do I actually I do what you do. I do the, 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 the zoomers test and the gut test right off the bat. That's part of where we start. But I yep. don't do much more than that. And let until we've spent a few months together, and we've worked on clearing that stuff and then perfect yeah that's what yeah do, so. yeah so all right hopefully this answered some questions for you guys gave you guys some good guidance as always if you have questions you can put them in the comments below linda and i will get back to you in the respective locations where this broadcast is being sent and um we'll see you guys in a couple weeks yeah we'll see you in two weeks we'll talk about something else okay East Coast. <laughs> yeah talk soon okay thanks thanks Ray. bye-bye